everyone. So today we're going to do things a little differently. We're going to give you a tour of our 3587. Uh, we've had several requests and so we thought with the sun shining today would be a perfect day to do this. So we'll get started here and I will take you on a tour. Come this way. So first there's two ways of accessing our boat. The first is through the side here, which we've got this two step that came with the boat, which is perfect for climbing up and going through the side here. One of the other improvements we made is added this grab bar here. Without that grab bar, you're always torquing on these or somebody, this is just a natural spot to grab. Anyone who with a 4087 or 3587, um, that's, a real, uh, that's, a, that's a real good improvement to make way is through the back, up the aft deck. So one thing about the 3587 is because it's a raised aft deck, um, we've got the nice molded steps onto the upper aft deck. We only have these two ladder rungs, that's it for any kind of ladders. Um, that was one feature that we really liked about this boat is we didn't want any kind of ladders on the boat. Okay, so this is known as a Nick Jackson uh, davit, and it's an aluminum, it's a one-piece aluminum structure that there's basically some cables that go down and the dinghy hangs from, and the motor is tucked into that uh, portion in between there with the winch on it, and there's a cable that goes up to the top there, and then at the bottom here, it just pivots right down on the transom, down at the... Uh, just down here. Now when we uh, when I installed this it doesn't articulate it doesn't have any articulation um, you know to accommodate for the angle of the transom this way so I did have to make up the poly plates there basically and used a router and made up a jig so I could make just the right um, the right wedge there and I did that on both sides and that was it that was that made it so I was able to you know fit it nice and square against the transom and then on the inside there, uh, structured it up to make it strong enough and, and uh, hold the weight of the boat. But it's, it is very simple to operate and just with one button it has, this allows you to unload the dinghy and load up the dinghy and uh, you know if, you, if the dinghy isn't easy to use you don't end up using it uh, or at least not as much and, uh, and one of the most important things is you're not loading the outboard on and off uh, bracket every time it stays on. There's no special brackets on the dinghy of any kind it just hangs from supports on the inside with cables uh, that you can undo. And um, it, there's some huge benefits, but the biggest downside is the overall length that it adds to the boat. So this is on our aft deck. Um, and one thing that our boat came with was the um, enclosure here. And this is a huge feature for our boat um, because during the off season, we can actually be out all winter long and it's nice and cozy in here, it doesn't get really cold. Whereas in the summer months we take it off just to let some air flow through the boat. This here is our, we call our wet bar. It's not all the boats come with the wet bar. Um, we've got storage on either side and of course a nice uh, U-line ice maker, which I think most boaters like their ice cubes. And so yeah, this was again a nice perk to get when we bought our boat. Not Again, not all boats come with this. Um, We've got our barbecue back here, and again, this is nice. It's it's mounted off the back here, and the panels are nice too because they just we can just slide it across here, and we can access the barbecue even if it's pouring rain out. And that stays nice and dry inside here while he's barbecuing, and it's outside. It doesn't drip anything inside. It just goes out back, and so that's a, a good good place for the barbecue. Um, this last year we added our deep freeze, which has made a huge difference for us. We were before packing coolers full of ice blocks, buying ice blocks every, what, three, four days, uh, you know, at four to five dollars a block. So it really added up to, we don't know why we didn't do this years ago because it was a game changer for us. And the uh, inconvenience too of, uh, you know. Trying to find ice, yeah, blocks yeah. of ice, good, good solid blocks of ice. Uh, Refuge Cove, I think by far, is probably the best place on that we've found on the whole coast here that probably has the best ice blocks. I remember Nanaimo Harbor had really good last time we yeah. got ice there too. But, that was uh, a really long time ago though. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
So this here uh, came with the boat, and when we when we got the boat, we were like, eh, I don't know if we want to keep this. So this is one of those just little uh, two burner Coleman cat stoves. And what's nice about this is it uh, it flips up when you're not using it. I don't want to do it right now, but it'll flip up, it'll hook up so it's out of the way so you can access the freezer. Um, but what this is perfect for is if you're doing stuff like fried onions, uh, boiling crab or boiling you know, anything, potatoes, whatever, you're not creating all that steam inside the boat so it's all done outside, and especially during the summer months too when it's really hot out. The last thing you want to be doing is boiling those pots of water in inside the cabin. You can actually just do it out here, and it's. And the so smell of seafood, as much as we like it, yeah. the smells the smell tends to linger. Yeah, and even the fried onions. We love the smell of fried onions, but yeah, not lingering in the boat. No. <laughs> so the other thing our boat came with um, is a we call it the dunnage box. I don't know if that's the technical term for this or not, but it's a storage box. In the bottom is our propane tank that we use for the galley. Um, the I should have said the propane for the barbecue is just around the corner here that's separate but this one has the propane tank in the bottom for the galley and then there's just kind of other stuff stored on top there so the other thing that we have is we have uh, this cooler here and Matt made the cushion on top we actually had two of these because previously before our deep freeze we would have one cooler full of uh, on our big trip one cooler full of like fruit and vegetables and the other one had all our bread products but now, because we have the deep freeze, we don't need that. And now it's become our kind of shoe bin. So it's all our water shoes and you know extra runners, whatever, they're all in there. And it's perfect storage because there's nothing you hate more than having the whole deck covered in shoes. So this is a perfect way to kind of store it all. It's hidden and it's not messy and yeah, it's perfect. So we're gonna take you up on the flybridge now. And again, another feature that we like about this boat for the flybridge is we have the molded steps. Again, there's no ladder going up to the flybridge. So because of that, we tend to use this boat uh, or the flybridge at anchor a lot. We'll spend a lot of time sitting up there because it's just a couple steps and you're up on the flybridge. So it's just another spot. So you're not just sitting inside the cabin or on the back deck here. You can sit up top on the flybridge. Yeah, it's nice without the ladder. Um, what Matt did with, our, with his handy dandy sewing machine is a lot of times if we're sitting on the back deck here we like to sit on the steps it's another nice seat so he made these nice cushions that fit in here and so we have that one and we have this one and they're perfect you can just come and you know whatever step you want to sit on you can sit here and they're really comfortable and and then when you're done you just take them away and and the rectangular one we also made that uh, we also made that one so it fits on the molded steps down lower so because often you're visiting with somebody off the back of the boat yes and that's a good place to sit too. yes okay so we'll go up to the flybridge and we'll show you some more okay so come on up we'll check out the flybridge so this um all the seating here matt redid all the upholstery last winter um a lot of it was all the, well, all of it actually was all the original Bayliner upholstery. And as much as it was nice to kind of have the little Bayliner logo, unfortunately we needed to replace it all. Um, so up here, again, we have all the closed in canvas up here, a nice feature as well, just kind of keeps everything out of the weather. Uh, during the summer months, if we're, when it's not raining for a while, good weather, we'll actually take all these panels off and we have a, a bag here that we actually put it in. So when we're not using them, we put them inside this bag. And this is really important because if you don't put them uh, inside here, kind of out of the sun, they'll actually uh, get damaged from the sun, kind of heating them up. You could just have them laying on top of each other in the sun. So we made this bag and we just store them in there when we're not using them. Um, and this was just made with a piece of... Uh, Some uh, yeah, it? No, it was cotton. Yeah. It's like a cotton canvas material. I think it's called uh, cotton duck or something like that. Yeah. And then I uh, just sewed a perimeter of Velcro around it. And uh, Yeah, it's nothing, nothing, nothing fancy, um, but it's just perfect for storing the pieces just so they don't get damaged, so... Yeah, works really well. Yeah. Um, so over here we have uh, an angel fridge freezer, com combi I guess they call it, angel combi. Um, this was actually from our Alvin 25 and what we like about this is like say during um, 
the off season, we'll use it for one side as kind of refrigerator, the other side we'll use as freezer. But what we'll end up using is uh, during the summer months, like this year with our big deep freeze, this was all fridge, so which was perfect because a lot of times from home I'll bring extra milk and cheese and all that kind of stuff, eggs. So just extra fridge space was great. And what was really nice was when we bought this boat, it actually came with this um, wooden compartment. It was like meant to, to fit the Angel fridge. So it was perfect. We didn't have to build anything to accommodate it. It came with it. You did have this actually being used for the fender storage, but yeah. there was uh, four fenders up front on the fender holders, but uh, it, um, yeah, a fridge up here really seemed to make sense and since we had it from our last boat it worked quite yeah, well. Yeah, so it's perfect. We really, really enjoy it. And, it. and it doesn't use much power, which is good too. It's uh, very efficient on its power. And one thing with this space right here, uh, this space is a completely unused, just open area, which open area is nice, but it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't serve a great purpose. No. Yeah, so this is a... Uh, our upper helm here and this is where we do all our cruising from there is a lower helm that we'll show you downstairs but we actually find up here uh, the visibility is perfect um, I really like it you can see you know all the logs and stuff in the water and our windows are a little bit dirty right now but that's okay <laughs> but um, yeah the lower helm I think maybe a few times Matt will cut if he's driving upstairs he might come downstairs just to check on check on us and you know steer from a little bit downstairs but we never actually sit down there and steer it's all done from up here because again the visibility is perfect up here so and that's what you want you want to be able to see what's in the water because the last thing you want is to hit a deadhead or something and do major damage to your boat so yeah so we'll continue on with our tour we'll take you inside the cabin and show you what uh, the inside looks like okay so we're going to take you inside now and show you the interior of the boat The nice features of the 3587 is the uh, upper galley. Uh, it's really nice when you're cooking or you're uh, sitting at the table having a meal. You can just see everything out around you, which is a really nice feature. So what this boat has is we've got a propane stove and oven. So again, we're not uh, using electricity, turning on any generators to run the appliance. Uh, we've got a fairly full size uh, fridge freezer, which is perfect. So one nice thing that's good with, with an oven is you can actually store all a lot of your, um, you know, baking sheets and pizza pans and bread pans, all that kind of stuff. Otherwise you're just putting in your cupboards and using up all that space. So this is a perfect spot to store all those kind of things. Yeah, in here we've got, this is where we have our garbage. And there's our little, there's a little drawer here with little uh, lighters and scissors and stuff, just a little teeny cupboard there. And storage under the sink which goes all the way back. Um, let's see if I can get out of the way here for Matt. So yeah we have some big bowls and then this cupboard here um, is actually two drawers so um, for me I store all you know my little ziplocs and stuff and foils and then the top drawer I've got all a bunch of my tea towels and measuring cups and stuff so um, we used to keep all our cutlery in here, but we found that it was a uh, real nuisance every time you wanted a fork or a knife to kind of open up these drawers because, you know, so many times a day you're going into that. So over here on our dinette, we've got these nice little storage containers that we actually got. We, some friends of ours had it on their boat and it's perfect for storing the cutlery. So it's all there handy whenever you need it and you're not going in and out of the, the cupboard there for it. Um, on this dinette last winter, more projects Matt did. Uh, Matt reupholstered all the cushions here with top grain leather and all new foam, so it's very comfortable now. It was uh, got pretty uncomfortable before. Yeah, it had the original uh, sort of pleathery material, um, and once it came off, it was uh, it ended up being so thin mm -hmm. that you could actually see through the fabric. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and the foam was pretty beat down as well. Yeah. So another spot where there's some storage is under this uh, side of the dinette. Um, but for us, we actually don't have it as storage because, well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> there's some light back in here. But we actually have um, a heat pump in here. I'm just gonna pull these out. So 
for us, the heat pump pretty much takes up almost all the space. Now, again, we have some friends with the same boat. They don't have a heat pump. And I was amazed when I saw how much stuff they had stored in this area. Like, it, I was, it was incredible. I was kind of jealous about it because sometimes space is at a premium when you're on a boat. So anyways, one day if this ever packs it in, we probably won't replace it. And then we'll have all this for storage. So um, this is our lower helm station, which like I said, uh, when we were up on the flybridge, we don't drive from here because just the visibility is terrible. Um, so, you know, the controls are anything in here. There was a chair, which we removed that chair. And since we got the dog, it's become where her little bed is. So this is her spot and we just leave her crate here all the time. So that's where she sleeps. And there's also storage um, under the couch, which is perfect. Um, these, these cushions just pull open. And... Now with our boat, it did come with, there was a built-in vacuum system, um, but we found that we didn't really use it all that much. And it actually pretty much took up this whole space. So we removed it, it's at home right now. And we just use a regular vacuum when we won't need to vacuum the boat. So oh, so we have a vacuum that we carry with us too. Yeah. But it's a little uh, wet dry vac, sort of small shop vac. Uh, the built-in vacuum, it's only dry vac anyway. So mm -hmm. you kind of want to have one that does both at yeah. least. Yeah, so this is perfect storage I find for pretty much our uh, beverages when we're uh, cruising. And then the other side is the same um, same size and it's just uh, canned goods and stuff I store on that side. So yeah, we, over here we've got the electrical panel which probably maybe when we go to the aft cabin, Matt will talk about that briefly. And yeah, so we'll go forward here and we'll show you. This boat has two heads, so I'm gonna show you the forward head. And these stair treads, by the way, Matt redid all those as well. And I'm just going to scoot here out of the way. Maybe Matt, you can do a pan in there. Okay, so this is the forward head. It's all, it's all molded fiberglass here around the bottom. And it does have a drain. And it also, uh, you can use this sink. Um, the sink spigot can go up top. So then it gives you the ability to have showers in here as well. And um, it's a... It works well, no issues with it. Um, it's fairly nice and um, yeah, it, it definitely adds to the layout. Okay, so we're gonna go down front and McKenna is gonna tour you in the forward cabin where she, she sleeps. Yeah. Okay. So this is my room, um, here is my bed, it's pretty big, um, and under here there's three large storage compartments, which is really handy, and then there's storage here in the nightstand, and there's also two drawers under here. And then also there's this little couch here that you can sit on. And then there's a little bit of storage in there as well, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, that's my room. My favorite part is probably the TV. And me and Hunter watch movies almost every night when we're on the boat, which is really great. It's a very nice room. It's almost, a, almost as nice as a, as a little master. Yeah. And Hunter is going to show us his room. So this is my room. This door can close, so then this is like one room, and then you can use the door behind, so then these are like two separate rooms. Oh, okay. Well, let's uh, demonstrate that. Okay. So you're so going to undo that one. you just push up this little latch there, and then you can close this. And then, okay, go ahead and close that. I'm gonna open this one. Ah. Okay, just close it. I gotta come out here. Okay, 
open up hut? And that's, it's like, so then that's kind of like a wall. And then this is, this could be the main door. This is like- So that would give us the ability to have your cabins completely separated then. Yeah, Dory likes it too. Um, this is my bed. It goes down really far actually. Oh yeah. So this uh, works out to be kind of a full double then. Yeah, and that's on the other side of that. You can open that and then it's the engine room. There's also one at the end there. And this thing here, it flips up. So this is like where we keep like all the floaties that we use when like we go to desolation. Cause this goes like all the way back in there, but it's like down in here. And this up here is where I keep like all like my small things. We kind of cleaned it. This is my blanket. There's another one underneath. That's storage. And then this here, this is my closet. My dad put the shelf in, so then it's like another shelf and that's where like we keep like a bunch of like chip bags and stuff. There's like this big um, clothes, he clothes uh, hanging thing. locker. Yeah. And then um, there's kind of like stuff where like we're just gonna clean stuff like that. And then there's like a little shelf thing on the back there. And that's basically it. Oh, well, it looks like a pretty nice room. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to show you the master aft cabin. That's, of course, we saved the best for last. So one of the um, selling points for us on this boat with this aft cabin was the bed is pretty much almost a full uh, walk around bed. Um, you kind of come all the way over here. There's a little ledge here, but yeah, you can pretty much almost walk all the way around. Um, so that was a nice feature on this boat. Um, the mirrors, I think, kind of dated a little bit, the <laughs> mid-90s, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, and what's nice is in behind this one, we have storage. Um, and this was originally for the old uh, deep CRT television sets that they actually have. Mm -hmm. It's got like a got the old coax co co um, connection for uh, cable TV and it's got uh, power in the back there yeah so there's that one um, we'll just show you so we have a, a separate head in this one which is a nice to have a, a second head on the boat especially with kids and then here which is my favorite part is we have a separate separate shower stall um, so it's got a little bench you can sit on it or stand however you want to do it but and on our big trip because we don't tend to have showers every day because we're trying to uh, be cautious with our water um, this ends up kind of becoming our storage for uh, garbage and empty pop cans or anything that get crushed down um, just because you don't want to leave all that stuff on your back deck or laundry of, yeah laundry yeah. and so this kind of becomes a storage area for that kind of stuff which is which is nice to have um, the full vanity there's you know we kind of store some clothes over here um, we added in these shelves yeah we added some in. shelves yeah that one doesn't have too many but yeah but it was kind of nice because I think which ones you added those two I think yeah yeah it just had one shelf in the middle yeah so just for extra clothes and stuff there um, we have another uh, hanging closet here. Um, a cedar line closet. Yep. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, lots of room in there. That's where I stash my chocolate chips down in here. So that's a, this is probably like during the summer, that's the best spot for them because they don't, they don't melt there. So that's nice. Um, we've got a couple drawers for clothes below the bed. They're not super big, but they're, they're big enough. Um, so this here is uh, one of the access points to the engines. So I'll just uh, see if I can open this up and you can have a little look. Straight up. <laughs> there we go. Okay. The lights aren't on in there, but... So the one downfall with this boat, um, it's pretty tight for the engines. There's not a whole lot of room 
for Matt to get around there and work on them. Um, but so, he manages and gets stuff done. And So we have uh, uh, twin diesels in this boat. Um, they, uh, they are 250 horse uh, uh, Hino diesels. And then we have an 8 kilowatt diesel Westerbeek generator in the middle between them. And as Kelly said, yes, it's a, it's a fairly tight engine compartment. Um, between this axis, um, also these stairs over here, they flip up. Um, the panels in the floor, there's panels underneath the couch and in the galley, um, and then uh, forward in Hunter's room there. Um, you can get to everything you need to, but it is a, it is a pretty tight engine compartment. Okay, and this is our electrical control here. And uh, so on this side we have our DC panel, we have our water, we have our, our shore um, or inverter changeover, we have the generator control, we have the windless lockout, we have the AC panel, we have the instrumentation over there that gives us um, how much uh, consumption we have for amps and volts and uh, both AC and DC systems. Pretty straightforward panel, looks a little, maybe a little complex, but um, it's not too bad. I made a few modifications to uh, make improvements to it. One thing we did on this boat when we got it is I ordered a S-Bar hydronic system. I think it was the D, D5W, I believe, hydronic heater. And uh, it's basically a diesel boiler commonly used in uh, in the trucking industry to keep the engines warm at night when they shut down in really cold weather or to preheat engines. Um, but they're also used in boats and buses and stuff like that as well. So that runs off diesel and it maintains, it maintains a heater loop of hot fluid, kind of like your car heater in your car, it heats, it heats coolant. And that's cycled throughout small radiators throughout the boat. And we have the little thermostats in each compartment, plus one of those little radiators and the thermostat will cycle a fan. When the fan's not on, it doesn't actually push much heat into the cabin, but as soon as it falls below the, whatever you set the thermostat for, it goes ahead and cycles the fan as needed to maintain that particular cabin's temperature. So through doing this, we do have both of the heads that way, both of the kids' rooms and our room in this up front and in the salon here. Those are all heated with that method with the thermostats and not heated by thermostat, but also that fluid's pumped up to the flybridge. So with the full enclosure on and zipped up in the winter time, even when you're driving up there, that area does get nice and warm and it does become heated at least. A very good investment, um, especially in this, in this climate. Uh, it makes the boat basically usable year-round and the electricity cost when you're at anchor meaning you know your batteries and how long they'll last takes very little power to run that system uh, it can run for a whole weekend you can afford that amount of electricity on the end of your second night the batteries will be a little bit low um, but during the winter we do sometimes or commonly will fire up the generator if we need to especially if there's not much sun and we can charge up our batteries by that method but um, it's a really it's a really good nice heat for the entire boat and it really keeps it very comfortable all over and, uh, and makes boating really worthwhile that time of the year. From MV Mechanicai. So that's a wrap of our boat tour of our Bayliner 3587. We hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything else that you'd like to see or have any questions about, uh, give us a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. Thanks for watching. Thank you.